stalemate between the National Lands Commission and, of course, the Cabinet Secretary has been witnessed in the last couple of days as well. Let's bring in Ferdinand Omondi to look at the issues that have been touching residents there. Ferdi. Good evening, Linda. Well, this evening, or, or lately in the coast region, the land matters have come up very strongly again. I mean, the matters of land in the coast region are well documented. It has the highest number of squatters in the country. Every county has a story to tell here. Operation, land grabbing, and evictions, you name it. And before we go in deeper, let's just go to the county of Kilifi, where I sought a perspective from the extensive salt belt, where the squatters there feel they have their land taken away from them in a manner that is not right. Watch the story. Yard in Kanagoni area of Kilifi. She says she has lived here for over two decades but has never enjoyed peace of mind since 2001 when the provincial administration called a baraza and asked her and her neighbors to take a walk. <laughs> Amid constant warnings and occasional threats, Spation says some locals chickened out and left, but she and her husband opted to stay back and fight. Court injunctions enabled them to hang on until 10 years later when the so-called genuine landowners struck again, this time allegedly evicting them with brute force. <laughs> The said landowner is a salt company. This area is a salt belt with at least four factories that produce most of the salt used in Kenya's homes. But their relationships with locals have always been frosty. According to a local civil rights organization, the bad blood dates back to the mid-80s when large-scale salt mining companies bought huge parcels of land in opaque deals with corrupt government officials, displacing local communities in the process. The apparent official land grabbing is said to extend to this day where investors armed with controversial official documents still displace hundreds of families from arable land and convert them to commercial salt farms. This is an extensive farm of 1,000 acres all harrowed up in readiness for salt farming. This massive piece of barren land was once occupied by hundreds of families until tractors came by and mowed down the homesteads and the livelihoods therein. And this, they say, was done without sufficient consultation or sufficient compensation. Kazongu Mao is among those mourning their lost livelihoods. She bitterly complains that she was evicted from here with the help of the same government that she hoped would protect her. Na tumefungwa, hata mimi tayari najua, na, najua kuenda huko prison. Na sisi tukaona hali mekuwa ngumu, hatuna mahali kwa kueka watoto wetu. Kwa tuka toka kule, tuka, tuka shuka huku, barabarani huku. Saa hii muhinda metufata huku, anatupokonya hii mahashamba yetu yote. The biggest contention here is the displacement versus compensation debate. Some locals admit they received some money to move out, but Malindi Rights Forum maintains it was a scandalous ploy. Baadhi ya wale walio furushwa, ilazimika wachukue bahasha, ambazo zilikuwa zidaisiwa kwa mandani zina pesa, wakua umeshikiwa bunduki. Sidani kama hilo ni swalazuri kwa mba ulipo fidia ikua umeshikiwa bunduki. The salt farm's extension is not just affecting the locals, it is also threatening the meager natural resources. This area is a water trap which locals depend on for domestic consumption and for their livestock. The wells do not bring out the cleanest water, but this is as good as it gets for them, with water vendors traveling as far as 10 kilometers away for the precious commodity. But the bulldozers are clearing land closer and closer to the wells amid fears that even these could be covered and turned into salt farms. Most of the locals had long given up on getting justice from the courts or the government. The margins of the National Lands Commission rejuvenated some hope, with the forum saying they saw tangible action after appeals to Chairman Mohamed Swazuri in December 2012.
na ripoti sasa hivi imetoka uh, masuala ni kwamba imejitokeza kwamba baadhi ya, ya, ya mashamba sio vile ambavyo yanatakana yawe However, this adjudication process is now under threat following the lockdown of the lands registry by Cabinet Secretary Charity Ngilu. Several opinion leaders have thrown their weight behind Swazuri in the supremacy battle and the central government has come under fresh attack over land matters. Kwamba watu wa wana title deed, na leo Charity Ngilu, akiungwa mkono na uhuru kinyata, wanapigana na National Land Commission inaungozo na, na ndugietu Muhammad Swazuri. Tunakemea serikali ya jubili, tunamkemea waziri charity ngilu kwa kuingilia tume ya ardhi inayosimamiwa na ndugu yeku Muhammad Swazuri peana nafasi National Land Commission ifanye kazi yake kwa sababu sisi watu wa Mombasa tumedhulumika kihistoria kwa minaji mambo ya mashamba in Likoni area Thousands of squatters are still waiting for Ngilu to provide title deeds to about 940 acres of land famously known as Waitiki land which she promised them over one year ago that she would deliver within one month in office. While seeking election, the Jubilee administration promised to address the contentious land question once and for all. They are focused on the problem of land and squatters in our country. We have the solution. That solution is yet to come. But in Anumundi, KTN, Marereni, Kilifi. Well, we have been engaging the lands government secretary church in Gilu. We hope she is back online. Good evening, madam. Now, you have listened to the coast leaders attacking you and the presidency there. They are saying that you are deliberately frustrating the lands commission and Swazuri with the sole intention of making sure the adjudication process doesn't take place. And they're saying this is the blessing of the president. What say you? Yes. Yes, I want to say, Linda, that we are absolutely on course. We are prepared to give Kenyan title deeds. This is a promise that the Jubilee government made to Kenyan. And indeed, he said that the president has said that in the next three years, we are going to issue three million title deeds. We have made plans, and the National Titling Center at the Fazer of Kenya is all ready, and we start this work that we promised that we are going to do. This is the first step, just to ensure that we can at least know who owns land where, who might have been shot sent by who, and therefore we are on course. How can you say that you're moving forward? How can you forward, say uh, that you're moving Madam forward, uh, Madam Gilu? And the Lands Commission has taken you to court to seek interpretation on the mandate between you and uh, and, and NLC. What's going on? Sorry, I want to say that again. My question is: How, My can, question you is, that, uh, how can you say that uh, things are going well while the National Land Commission has taken you to court? Well. That's all right, but uh, work continues. For instance, that we have done so far, within the last few days, every Kenyan can see a journey of a hundred, of a thousand miles begin with the first step. We have started this journey. And we are not turning back. Kenyans expect the government to give them service. And this is the service that we promised to give to Kenya. All right, madam. All right. Madam Gilu, because of time, I will let you go there and hand over to Linda. But Linda, perhaps maybe if you have more time, she can explain to the people of Likoni who she promised to give title deeds in the Waitiki land uh, within one month in office. It's been one year and they're still waiting. Perhaps she can shed more light on that. But from Mombasa, I'm signing off. Good night. Linda.